Okay, so we've got our text and I'm going to put one of these on each page. So I'm just going to copy the first one and then paste it in the first page, then I'm going to go to the second page. Yes. Yeah, so you didn't uncheck facing pages. So you can go to File, Document Setup, and you can uncheck it and it'll be fine. How did you choose like what to use for text? What do you mean? How did I choose it? How did you decide all random? Oh, I think these were actual events that happened, and I found the stuff on the internet. Yeah. Okay, everybody have one of these on each page? Yeah? Okay. So I'm going to use styles to make... Are there questions? Because there's a lot of talking, guys. Thank you. The more time you use now, the less work time you have. <clears throat> People always like work time. So I'm going to use paragraph styles to make it easy to format these the same way. And, okay, this is like the exact process you're going to use on a recipe, but I'm not going to like, it's a recipe for a recipe, right? Ha! You're welcome. Um, but I'm not going to do it with an actual recipe because it gives people too many answers, basically. So I want to make sure that these are even in the same spot on each page because it should look like a book. And on one, on one book, like, the text doesn't start here, and in the next one it's in here. Like, that doesn't happen. So I'm going to put uh, my text box, I don't know, vaguely up here. And then I'm going to look at these numbers right up in the top corner. So I have my reference point. I talked about this with the rotate tool, I think, briefly. But I have my reference point in the top left, which is the default. You could certainly reference any other point. Um, but I'm going to set the X and Y to one inch each. So it's X means it's one inch from the side, and Y means it's one inch from the top. So I know exactly where that text box is. So I might come back and change that later, but <clears throat> I'm going to start there. So I know exactly where that box is. And um, I'm going to double click in there. <clears throat> so I'm in my type tool. And I'm going to press Command A so I select all the type. Because I'm not going to use Minion Pro. Um, so these would be more kind of like poster things. So you're going to be doing a cookbook, which is like a small printed size, right? So that typically means that your like font size for like small readable text is really only like 10, maybe 11 points. Um, 12 always looks a little bit too big unless it's not something that is a book, even if it's printed. So keep that in mind and make sure that you choose a, an appropriate typeface. So like we talked about like Baskerville and Sabon and Garamond um, being good sort of like small type, like readable typefaces. So that's how you can't use a sans serif, but typefaces like uh, Frutiger and Helvetica, for example, I mean, they were really like a kind of ideally made for signs and stuff or like bigger things so let's say you couldn't use them but make sure you're doing spacing really well if you're going to use a font that's not um, primarily for this you just need to pick an appropriate one that's good for books 
Um, okay, so let's see. What's a font everybody might have? Does everybody have this ITC Cheltenham font family? Cheltenham. So I'm just going to choose the book weight just to start everything. Um, so the title, that's my focal point, right? So bigger, heavier. And you don't need to have like exactly what I have. So the speaker, maybe italics and also kind of larger. Hmm. So date, time, and location. Or we talked about this before. This is also a nice review of our hierarchy things. I'm going to move the date and time on the same line. The location under it. And maybe I'll move that there. Okay, so I don't want any double returns because that's bad news, right? Um, and when I do want space, I'm going to I'm going to click in the uh, speaker line. I guess that would be. I'm going to add a space after. And you can do a space after in the top bar. If you have a small screen, you might not get those options. You can do it in the paragraph palette. Exact same stuff. <clears throat> That's currently a 12. Okay. I feel like I'm making everything bigger if it's going to be a poster, but we can do that all at once. Um, <coughs> so I think date and time could probably use a bit of a boost. And that shortcut that I um, showed you a couple of times shift command and then the comma and period keys to make the font two point small and two point larger works on fonts of multiple sizes. So these are all different sizes, but I can make all of them two points larger. So maybe I'll move art department up there. little bit larger. And I'm going to add, I'll stick with space after so we're doing the same thing. Add a little space after there. So I'll do some italics and bold italics. Break this up a little bit more. And it's better to zoom out so I can actually see my whole page. <coughs> So once I've got this kind of like composed, um, I can resize everything in here at once. 
So I'm going to move it a bit. And then if I hold shift and make this box bigger, it's going to stay in proportion, but it's not going to change what's inside. Just like links, right? Does anybody remember what else you have to press to get the content to be larger and not just the frame? Anybody remember? Command. Close. <laughs> So option will copy it. Weird feedback. So I'm going to hold shift and command, make the box bigger, and then everything inside it scales up. So this is going to leave us with some messy font sizes, which if you have OCD about that, I apologize. So you can see they're all net, like nothing is a round number. Um, but it doesn't, you know, it's it's not actually any big deal, I guess is my point. And what we are doing, it's fine. So I um, got out of the text box and hit W so it would hide all my margin lines and stuff like that. So I kind of want to have some things moved in. So I talked about double returns as being something that we're not going to do anymore in graphic design. The other thing I don't want to see is this, space bar, space bar, space bar. Oh, I guess that's good. None of that. That's over. Because remember, that scales with the type. Probably not going to give you what you want as you're working with it. So we're going to use, well, we have a few options up here, actually. So we've got this left indent, which um, we'll do a whole paragraph. So I'll show you on this par paragraph because it has multiple lines. So it's kind of like a block quote or um, I think it's an, like MLA style. If you're quoting something longer in a paper, it's like indented kind of. Um, so there's that option that would do a whole paragraph. And we've got a first line indent. We talked about horizontal space or first line indent for paragraphs before. Um, we also have a like right side indent, which is kind of hard to see. You can see it, it almost looks like my column's getting narrower. And then we have a last line indent, which I don't think I have ever used in my life. But it's there because logic, I suppose. First and last, left and right. Knock yourself out. Um, so I'm going to go back up to this line. And I'm just going to use the whole left indent because it's only one line. And I'm going to choose a specific value um, to indent that. And then maybe I'll highlight these lines. So I'm trying to make like more of a shape with this rather than just like a rectangle. Because everyone's seen rectangles, which is good. So I still want this to be readable, but I want to add like just a little bit of interest to it. Um, if you hold shift when you're doing these, it goes by quarter inch. So I'm going to increase the left and right indents on the paragraph. <laughs> so I get something like that. Again, yours doesn't have to look exactly like that. Rapid clicking. <laughs> So as I'm looking at this, the bullet in this font is very dense. And it keeps drawing my attention because it's almost kind of in the middle there. So I'm going to replace that with, what's their ad symbol look like? Yeah, that's better. If you didn't know, on a Mac, you type one of those bullet points by typing option 8. And you'll get those bullets. 
Just a side note, FYI, comes in handy a lot. <clears throat> um, and then looking back, I think I'm just going to make the title larger and take it to two lines because this is like a flyer poster situation. And Okay, so this is 50. Okay. So I want those lines a little closer together. So I'm going to start the letting around the type size and then just nudge it up from there until I get what I want. Okay. So. <clears throat> Certainly could do more with this, but for our purposes today, I'm going to go with this. So I also want to move it a little bit down the page. Maybe like there, so it's not centered, but it's not, it doesn't look like it's cling, clinging to the top. And there probably, if this were a flyer, there probably would be other visuals with it. But again, we're focused on our styles today. So once I move it to a place I like, I'm going to look at my X and Y values again so I can start my second page. And I'm going to change this just to like the closest round numbers. So let me get two inches and 0.75 inches. So you don't have to, you don't have to change them. I'm just going to, for the sake of the demo, make them like the closest round numbers. Okay, so. 0.75 and 2 inches. So we're going to do our styles, but because we just talked about that, I'm going to go to my second page. And I'm just going to type those numbers in. So I'm going to make the X value 0.75. So it's 0.75 from the left edge and 2 inches from the top. So now it's in the same spot. So now I'm just going to go and pick up my styles from here. So I'm going to open my paragraph styles uh, window if you closed it last time. It's under window and then styles and choose paragraph styles and paragraph and character styles come out together. So remember paragraph styles are like the workhorses. They've got many, many more options. Mm -hmm. um, character styles are only for exceptions. They're the bold words in your, the bold vocab words in your textbooks. All right, so I'm going to start up in the title, and I'm going to option click the new style. Option clicking stops you from getting a whole bunch of things named paragraph style and then a number that don't mean anything. So just like when you're working in Photoshop and Illustrator, naming your layers is a good idea, and in design. I confess to not being awesome with getting myself to use multiple layers in design, but. Um, Proper naming is always going to help. All right, so name that title. Okay, just kind of double check everything is as it should be. Um, I'm going to skip the shortcuts on this one. Um, I certainly would recommend them. You can put them in if you want, but I, that's not my focus with this one. So speaker. Option click, date, location, time. Do you have the like, No, You want pure desk style. So go to the left. You have that window. That one. Okay. So I'll option. Go option. There we go. Got it. So one thing I chose to do in mine is I want 
th like these two lines are the same font. They're both italic. One's just bold italic. They're the same size as well. So this, the smartest way to do this is to make, um, make this a character style. So I need to go through here and. Sorry, could you the so the are you talking about the bold italic for making a character style? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to go through here and make sure every, all of this is applied to what I want. Because so you have to make sure that it's applied to the things that you made. That's a downfall of doing the option click. It doesn't automatically apply it to the thing. It just sort of picks up those styles. So you need to click in your title and apply the title style. Click in speaker and apply speaker, etc. So as you, you should be able to put your cursor up in your title and just tap your down arrow. And the highlighted paragraph style should change for each one. So everything should be on a paragraph style. So there's that one missed it. Um, so that's going to be date, location, time, which removed the space after. Okay, I got my host institution with that. Okay. So I'm going to do the character style first, and then I'll talk about getting this, like the ins and outs of the spacing issues. So I'm going to click in the, this line that I want to be different, and I'm going to go to Character Styles, make a new one, double click, and it's got bold italic in here, so I'm going to say cool, bold italics. And then I'm going to highlight that all of those characters and make sure that the bold italics character styles apply to them. So for spacing, I need some space in here and I need some space in here. But these are two paragraphs, remember? So if I go out of here and do my, uh, let's see, W to get back and then Option Command I to show my little hidden characters. These are two different paragraphs. So I can't put a space after or before on these. Or like if I put a space after, there's going to be too much space in here because these are two paragraphs. They'll both have the spacing. I wouldn't want to do a space before because I'll end up with the same problem. So this would be a circumstance where I might um, consider doing the space as an override. So because these are both two paragraphs of the same um, paragraph style, I don't want extra spacing. I'll show you what happens when you add it, though. So I'm going to pretend I'm going to edit this style. So I'm going to edit my date and location style. I'm going to go to indents and spacing. So it has picked up my left, left indent nice. I'm like, well, I want space after the Shattuck Hall. So I go to space after. And it's doing exactly what you want. But remember, this is a paragraph. So I can't just add it to the style in this case. Whenever possible, add it to the style and do not do it as an overload. So I'm going to cancel that change and just put my cursor in the last one and add a space after. So I'm going to do the same here because it's the same situation. Um, I suppose I could make this its own paragraph style and add the space after on that one, but it kind of depends on um, the formatting of the other bit of information. So that might not work on the other one because it's got slightly different, like there might be another line to that section, which would then create the same problem we had before of everything in that style getting the spacing and we don't necessarily want it. So I can add, I can do this, the space after, or what I could do which is like slightly better, but I also get the argument for that, is I can add a space before on the paragraph. 
So I'm going to double click my description style, go to indents and spacing and add a space before. So now all of my descriptive paragraphs will have that space before. And I'm going to save this. Too late, but I'm going to save it. Um, All right, so I have all my styles set up. I have my like text box location on the page. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and format this one. Any questions? Cause I'm just gonna kind of give you all a few minutes to do that. So remember that may mean moving some stuff around to make, make these look like they're in like a book of flyers and they were all formatted the same way. Not hearing anything. So remember, if your text outgrows the box, you can press uh, Command Option C, and it, the text box will grow to show you all of your text and not be hiding it. So I, went, I applied my styles first. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this line yet. So I'm going to go back up here. When it says part of year 2015, what does that mean? Like, do I need that? Um, yeah, because here 2015 was a series of talks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I realize it looks weird. Yeah. <laughs> And it's nice that is a uh, British um, like design publication. So you've probably started to realize that our styles from this short one make this one like too big for the page. You will run into this with your recipe. And each recipe has to fit on one page. So some of that you can do by curating your <coughs> recipes. But I'm just kind of sticking you with this content. So remember, though, we have everything on styles. So I went through here and just applied all my styles first. Because now I can edit them. Um, and it'll look a bit more sensical. Um, actually, that's so Royal Geog Geographical Society would be date, location, and time. Okay. So um, I'm going to click on my title and then double click my title style to edit it. I'm just going to reduce the font size enough so that it fits on two lines. I'm going to reduce the leading so it doesn't look strange. But now if I look at that, I know that the Grand Budapest Hotel is the name of a movie. So that should all be on one line because there's no reason to cut one word of the title off even if it's the. So I'm going to go a little bit smaller. So 
so that I could bump the to the next line. Because that's the title of a movie, it should probably be um, bold italics. So I could change it, but I already have a character style for that. That gave me those bold italics. So I'll just use that character style. And then I will have to go back in here and because the italics had slightly more horizontal space, I just had to bump the title down by one point. Okay. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna have to manually add some spaces. So if we didn't have like a list, ah, where am I here? If I didn't have these like three paragraphs in a row and then these two paragraphs in a row, it would be easier to, to do this, but I'm gonna add space between the uh, location, date, time, location stuff and sort of the host institution is what I called it. So I'm going to go back up here. So that's this space here. And I had added a 0 0.125 inch space after the last line of the location. So I'm still being consistent. So I'm just going to go in there and put in 0.125. And I'll have the same space. Um, I'm going to cut the like social media and web address handle. <clears throat> and I'm just going to plan to put that at the bottom, I think. And my description paragraphs are a bit too long. So I'm just going to make sure my cursor is in a description paragraph. Double click to edit, go to my basic character formats, and drop that down a couple of points. Okay, that seems to work. So then I go back up and check my other one. So this gives me a widow which is one of these really short ending lines. And it also gives me a hyphen. So this has sort of like two marks against it. And this one is looking all right. And if you have something that's like tens or hundreds of pages long, obviously no, you're not gonna for like do an edit for widows and hyphens unless it's super recognizable, right? Like if almost every page has one. Um, at a quick glance, then you can make a change for that. So I'm just gonna bump it down by half a point. And then there's a hyphenation setting and I can uncheck hyphenate and nothing will hyphenate. So I mentioned this setting in the paragraph palette, but you can set it in your styles and nothing with that style can ever hyphenate. So I've turned off that so the top one looks good bottom one let me turn off my invisible characters so looking pretty good so i'm missing a little bit of space here i think and just want to make sure i didn't oh yeah i added a little space before so i'm gonna make that a little bit larger space there. So I put that in the style. So I'm going to go back into description, go to my indents and spacing and increase my space before. And to be consistent, I'm going to replace the word at with a 
um, at symbol. So the thing that's kind of different in this one is it has the social media and website thing. So this is related to this like here 2015. Um, I, I, you know, 2015 wasn't the only year that they did this. So I have options. I could put it up there on that line. I think I'm just going to leave it at the bottom, but I'm just, I'm going to kind of like browse to see which, if I could reuse one of my styles. So I think I'm going to go maybe with description and then use my bold italics. I've already got all those pieces in there. And then once I'm reasonably happy with it, um, I'm going to reassess my page position and try to find the best compromise between the two. So I'm going to this is a little bit higher than lower. So I'm at 0.75 and 8.8. So if I switch into presentation mode, I can flip back and forth and you see how this point right here, so that's my the edge of my text box, is in exactly the same spot on both. So the, this required some compromise, but also sticking to what we've learned about hierarchy and focal point and like using page space in an interesting way. So I think a lot of times if people would look at this when they're starting out and you were asked to recreate it, you would use maybe like four or five text boxes and we used one. So that's going to be key to making sure you get them to line up as well as just to like contain everything and control your spacing. So the downside of using multiple text boxes, well downsides, one, you have multiple pieces. And not everyone is great at being organized. And also, um, it's easier for things to stay aligned because they're already in one text box. And most critically, this spacing that we were putting in here, it's so difficult to make text boxes give you that same spacing because they're different objects. They don't have any like relevance to the others other than alignment and distribution. And it's kind of tedious to put in like exact spacing and make sure that your, your frames are like the minimum size so that the spacing actually means something. So I think it showed you before if you have two text boxes. Um, I can do this real quick over here. Actually, I'm going to use a smaller one because it'll show up better. So I'm going to make two copies of this and I'm going to do my option command C so that this one is like the minimum text box size. If I want these to align at the bottom of this paragraph, um, I could, and I just want to use my align bottom. It's aligning the boxes, not the content. So if you have boxes that need to be different sizes, like the aligning and spacing becomes super tedious unless they're all in the same text box. So your recipes with, um, a couple small exclusions that I'll talk about. They should all be one text box like this. One text box. So the exception would be, um, I want to know where you got each one. So you might want to, especially if it's a shorter recipe, I'm just going to copy that text just to make the point. You might want to put that in a smaller um, text box. And just gonna make this a basic paragraph. And maybe like right align it and just cut, you know, like put that box in the same place on every page. And that might say like recipes.com or whatever. I don't need the whole, I don't need the URL that's 20 miles long. I just need like the main site. Because if you've looked at the project sheet, like I asked you to, uh, you'll see that each recipe has to come from a different source. Um, can't you use one for each source? Nope. Everyone has to be from a different source. 
And that may mean that um, sometimes there's information about like the like the difficulty of the recipe or the yield, how much it makes or how much time it takes. They should all have the same information. And it's usually there in the recipes. It's usually just not formatted that way. Or it'll say it, it's like 20 minutes of prep, 50 minutes of cook time. Well, the total time then is 50 minutes plus 20 minutes. So it's an hour and 10 minutes. So it's there. You just might have to put some things together or kind of break them apart. Take like a, an educated guess if necessary. So this, I would say a lot of times ends up in a separate text box because it's sort of like a footnote and making that spacing work is tedious. Because as you would, I'm sure maybe hopefully expecting, what I don't want you to do is get to the end of your recipe and then hit return until it's near the bottom of the page and then paste it in there. No, thank you. Must be exact. <laughs> So that can be a separate text box. I've also seen people come up with a, like a, a reason to do their the titles in separate text boxes, but that's you know one out of ten times someone does it. Um, questions. You should have everything you need to do. Uh, recipes. So you probably don't want to choose ones with super long lists of ingredients <laughs> because they wouldn't fit on a page without being tiny. So I would say for something that's going to be printed like a book, you don't want any type smaller than eight point and that better be a super readable font. Because that's getting pretty small for anybody who doesn't have good vision. Um, 10 is probably like a good ballpark. Again, like the font matters. If you're going to use an old style font with a real small X height, um, you might need to bump that up a point or two. So like 10, 11 is usually good for recipes. And they also, these, these are functional documents. You're reading it, you're going away, you're doing something, you're coming back, you need to be able to find your place. So you're kind of like back and forth and... Okay. So could you pause? So the goal isn't to make the text interactive. Like if you're gonna make a cup of coffee and have like the steam rise up and have like some of the instructions be like the steam, that would be bad. Because, oh. Like, yeah. Like, no. This is like tactical text only. Okay. Um, okay gotcha. Yeah. You can do. I mean, you can have like a background picture, like a from like you know, but like not. The goal isn't to make it like. Completely crazy. Uh, I, no crazy. Yeah, I know. It's I a know. cookbook. Tactical. Yeah. Boring, regular. I yeah, I would avoid background images. If you want maybe a color, but remember, yeah. it's got to be easily legible, so it can't be similar to your text color. Yeah, I can do that. I, I, I'm, that's good. Yeah. yeah. I, simply text-based, not cookbook. Okay, so reviewing the cookbook sample, you need six recipes from at least four different sources. So you could reuse a source once, basically. Um, so cohesive, consistent, it should look like they're pages just taken out of a cookbook. So use typography to, to help your reader because they, like, they're not just sitting to read this, they're like in and out, they need to be able to find their place. You know, like the ingredients heading and like directions heading should probably match. Maybe with the same paragraph style? What? So they're like easy to see. Um, so minimal pictures or images, that should like do the text first. A lot of times when people add images, it often feels like they're shoehorning them in, which is annoying because I really like shoehorns and they're like a good addition to your life. Anyway, things I learned from living in Iceland. Um, why like specifically did you use shoehorns in Iceland? Because you do not wear shoes in homes in Iceland. I even had to take them off when I went to urgent care. You had to leave your shoes in the lobby. What? Leave them in the lobby at the gym. But aren't the shoehorns supposed to like, How do you put your shoes in the lobby? On? Yeah, so there's shoehorns hanging by like all doors. So when you get oh. back to the door after being inside, you like. Do you see much people just don't steal your shoes? Nope. <laughs> I, I once borrowed an old car, left it in the middle of Reykjavik. 
And it had this, it had power locks, but when you shut the door, all the power locks like sprung open. That's interesting. <laughs> and they were like, don't worry about it. No, nobody. Yeah, it's a good place. Anyway, back from our commercial about going to Iceland. So this is your technical setup, an eight page document using facing pages because you're making a little book. So page one will be your cover and you can do some like creative stuff there. Like simple, but creative. And then page eight will be the back cover. So, uh, would we, are we going to have to list, like, numbers at the bottom of the pages, like page one, page, you know, one, two? Nah, you don't have to. I wouldn't worry about that. Just, you know, do a little bit with your cover. Cool. <laughs> Already looking at food. No, not quite. <laughs> She's looking at a strawberry shortcake, not the food, but the Cook character. Book. Oh. <laughs> Cookbook. I mean, I you could have food. like a I like a recipe for success <laughs> and a recipe for fun and. Oh, what? Uh, oh no! Where's the box? I'm not thinking inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> I got a glasses off. Yes. Okay, so to make this document, I'm going to say eight pages and yes, facing pages. And then if you open your pages palette, you can see how they're all laid out. So one is your front cover, eight's your back cover, and your six recipes go on these pages. So because they're facing pages, oops, wrong keyboard shortcut. Um, you know, don't get too close to the sides, like healthy margins are nice for anything to be read. We talked about how margins, even in simple layouts, kind of give a like resting place. Um, and let's see. So there are some websites there. This is what this was a assignment I adapted from another um, kind of adapted from another source and I am so not into food so I'm not get, we're gonna get real excited about your recipes sorry what do you mean, what do you mean you're not, not into food, food. Uh, no I'm just not what? Um, you'll understand when you <laughs> develop health problems okay I'm alive, so I must be eating. Like, well, we're I good. Well, you're eating, but, like, <laughs> to not enjoy. Yeah, usually not. Okay, so the other thing I could do, if you, if you end up with a recipe you really want to use, but it has a long list of ingredients, so I'm going to, like, paste this in here twice. And just real quick, I'm going to, like, Use this to pretend it's like the title of the recipe and some little like subheading I gave it. You need, okay. So I need space. So I could, um, you know, hit all of my um, ingredient lines, go to my paragraph styles, make a new one. Double click and I'm going to call it uh, ingredients list. Okay, so my preface to this is this was broken last year. So I can span or split columns. So I can tell it to split into two sub columns. So I'll just say OK on that. And then if I make, if there's more content, it becomes two columns. So this is like if my whole text box had two columns, which I can set um, up here when I'm in this mode, I can set this to two columns. That's what this thingy is. I could go in and, <clears throat> and tell this to span all columns. So like a headline spans all the columns of a, like oh. a newspaper article. So th like this is like span behavior. 
sounds weird. And this is like split behavior. And then if I, let me. Um, well, I have a question. Let's just say if you have like recipes that are kind of in the same category, like cat, like you have to say you were to make hamburgers and hot dogs. Could you put on both pages? Could you have the text go and say the American section or something like that? Or, you know, you would have like fried rice and sushi and have the Japanese and put like the text in both pictures. Would that be kind put of Put the text in both pictures? I mean, I mean, you, you. I'm lost on the pictures part. Not, I meant the text. I'm sorry. I'm very, very <laughs> Do you I mean, mean the like, oh, yeah. can, can you go across yes. this? Yes. No. That's because point. if this were a book, that's where it would be folded. Yeah. And you can't read text in the crotch of a book. So I'm excited for this. Oh, yeah. We can totally, like, InDesign can booklet print this for us. So we don't have to figure out, like, what actually goes to what when you fold it and everything. So if we have time, we'll do that. Like, the way this the syllabus is put together now, we don't have time for that. We don't even have a formal critique on this. Depending on the poems, we might look at them Monday. I, I just don't know yet. So, so oh, so to finish my to finish my column thing, I pasted more text in there, and it's back to like the single column. So only this part had was split into two columns, and again, that was in. Um, I went down to span columns, and I told it to split. Split like a banana. There's <laughs> always money in the banana stand. <laughs> Questions? Questions? Cool. So I'll give you the rest of the time to work. I would find your recipes first. So you could start like a like somewhere where you just paste the links, like decide which six recipes you want first. And then put one in each page and just start doing the thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's just like copying and pasting is I mean, you'll have to type it out, maybe, yeah. but as long as it's from a different source, so at the bottom, just say, like, Grammy. I don't know. <laughs> I was just curious. Maybe if I would have, like, categories, you know, of recipes, or could we just have Grammy? Well, people usually pick one theme for the whole. It's That's only right. six recipes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. So I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nice. I don't want them to do I have, I have my six links. Pasta. Yeah. Are there any questions about like the style stuff? Is it making sense? So I'm actually going to go in here and like put my cursor in here and like arrow down and I shouldn't see any pluses. Well, I shouldn't see many pluses, right? Because plus means you styled after you did your, sorry, you made changes after you did your style, right? The little plus sign. So I shouldn't see many of those and everything should be on a style. Every piece of type needs to have the paragraph style. And you shouldn't have more than like eight to ten styles. That should be plenty. Because <laughs> like every page has a title, so that's one. And maybe there's a line about like yield and time and whatever. An ingredients heading that you could reuse for directions. Your list of ingredients, that's another one. Your paragraphs. That's not. That's like what six or seven. Yes. Um, I went to the span columns, which I know is confusing. Dear Adobe, why must you? And it, this is typically on single, and I just changed it to split. I mean, you could split it into more columns, but two is usually enough for a recipe, because again, you're coming like in and out of it, and like. It can't be too confusing. And also, like, the lines are kind of long to do three columns. Our covers can be different, right? Like, they don't have to follow the same style or should No, a cover can be more of, like, a visual thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it should, like, mean something about the inside, right? Because so like, it's a cover. Like a yeah. Like, so the whole, the styles, basically. Like, 
Oh. Yeah, you wouldn't necessarily need styles on the front because it's probably just like recipes about things. Yeah. So my like I do the cover last. Focus on the inside because that's the important part. So if you do awesome on the inside and your cover is like just real simple, like if you did everything perfect on the inside, like all the boxes at the same spot on each page, and like the cover is just kind of like blah, like you'll probably still get an A. Like the cover is not as important. But I realize for some of you like the super high technical thing is just kind of stressful. So the cover is my like, have some fun. <laughs> Because, like, you will have to be comfortable with both. It doesn't mean you wouldn't have a favorite between super technical and, like, super creative. But, like, you have to be comfortable with both in graphic design. Hence the assignment design. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. So I want to be okay, so we can have, like, a background or something. Uh, on the inside, I would... Right. Oh, you mean the whole page or like on? I don't know. I mean, like, like I'll take it off. Okay. But like, as a whole, I don't know how to not make it look boring, which I guess is the project. Well, not the, it needs to be simple and usable. Yeah. So, and, you know, if you have like crazy ideas, tone them down, then put them on the cover. Ah, that's <laughs> never do that again, man. But yeah, like having a background color is fine. Background images are just always tough to read over. And remember, like a lot of this is going to be smaller type, like that 10 point range. You can't really mess with that. So color, yeah, or maybe like a gentle gradient, but it's got to be faint because the type has to be super readable. Um, OK, I'm going to show you one more thing. Because, like, the questions I'm getting indicate to me that, like, the concept of styles, you know, obviously I've only, I've shown you, like, the most useful handful of things to do with styles, but there are, like, 20 more handfuls. that You, you just don't need to worry about it right now. <laughs> like, I'm just worried about this handful. Everyone gets this handful. Okay. So because we're doing recipes, I'll show you one more thing, which will probably um, make you curious about some other things in here. Um, okay, so um, okay on this one. So I could do um, okay, so quick review. Each one of these ingredients is a paragraph, right? Because it's a line and then there's a, like a, that little backwards P for, that you get when you hit the return key. Each one's a paragraph. So I can um, how should I start? Okay, so I'm going to go to my second one, and I'm going to add a new character or paragraph style. Double click on it, and I'm going to say, "Wow, ingredients list shaded." And notice it's based on my ingredients list. So this means if I go and change my ingredients list, like if I change the font. It'll get updated in this one. So then I'm going to go to paragraph shading, which is not like a condescending, you said what look? <laughs> oh, glass is still on. Okay. <laughs> I need to read the board. <laughs> so I'm going to check. <laughs> Touche. I'm going to check the shading box. And look, it puts a box behind it. And you can, you can like, um, let me organize my screen. You could like round the corners of it and you know to like soften it a little bit um i'm going to unlink that i'm gonna give gonna give it a negative left no wait i always get this like backwards it's an offset okay so i'm gonna give it a left side offset so it doesn't start like right next to that number and create a lot of tension um that's all i'll do there's a lot you can do obviously you can change the color so I'll change what's, what would not be, eh, the green's not bad. So it automatically makes it a tint because it's smart enough to do that. Um, tiny little top offset. So oh, now it's touching the bottom of the descender. Uh, 
Oh gosh. That was extra. So I'll make that a tiny little bottom offset. Okay, I feel better now. So I'll say okay, and then, so for every other one, I'm just gonna change the paragraph style to ingredients list shaded. And I get this nice, very readable effect. And it's even faster if I just tap the down arrow twice and then click, oops, until I get too fast. Mm. Yeah, that reminds me, I should change. Okay. So that was neat. I would probably make it not touch the side because you get this, this weird like pattern happening that's really distracting. So I would probably add, um, uh, where is I, shading. So it's right side. So I, I would give it a negative right side offset and it would, you know, not fill up my column there. I'm gonna say such as dill is adequate. So there's some other things. If you decide to do this, I might need to, you know, we might need to sit down and tweak some other settings because there's like column balancing and stuff that we can do to make it a little bit cleaner. But if you are absolutely adamant to do one that has a super long list of ingredients, you'll have to do some column something, which I'm happy to help with. So you may have noticed there are other things like there's paragraph rules. It's like paragraph rules, man, but it's like a line. So you can automatically have a line a specific distance above your type or below it. So sometimes it's nice for like titles and um, captions especially. So you can like have the title of a caption with a line under it and then like a smaller. So very powerful. So I gave one more thing for your handful. Any other questions? Okay, so go ahead and get started.